there are a lot of hidden fees in our industry, and it's one of my biggest issues. And for a lot of you that already know, my parents were burned by four financial advisors, and that is why I became an advisor. So I'm the first person to say hire an advisor, and I am also the first person, even if that's impossible, to say do not hire an advisor. But I need you to understand what you are paying, not just to an advisor, but the hidden fees. There's a lot of fees, and they all add up. And when they make sense to pay for them, like our clients that enjoy working with us, it can add value. And when it does not make sense, please do not pay them. So I'm going to go over the hidden fees inside of a portfolio. This is of a real person that came to me so you can understand, are these fees being applied to you? Do you need to pay this level of fees? And are you getting value for it? So that's what I'm going to go over in today's video. If you don't already know, I'm a certified financial planner. I'm the host of the Early Retirement Podcast, and I'm the vice president here at Root. Now let's have some fun. Now, real quick, this applies to today's episode, but you're going to see a community post on your screen right now. This is a post that I made, and you can see what I said here. We delayed our retirement by 0.000001% by taking this amazing trip. Don't save and save while sacrificing the present. Why am I showing you that? Well, that's my partner there, and we are in Venice, Italy, and I love this comment that I wanted to highlight here. Yep, retiring early means nothing without good health. Here's another person. I can confirm that. 18 years ago, I was 42. Partner was 40, hit an intersection, thrown from the vehicle, suffered a high spinal cord, paralyzed. All that money we were saving for travel, never used that. So in our industry, it's really big to where people talk about, oh my God, fees and this, isn't is it worth it? And we want to make sure we're not overpaying whenever we don't need to. I'm all about that. But too often people get really intentional and I like what this person said here, and if it's very powerful, which is we don't know how long any of us have, so don't get so lost in the weeds of your planning that you forget why you're doing all of this. Now, I know some of you are like, I don't need to hear that stuff, but I like showing it because I want to make sure you are thinking intentionally. Now, I'm going to show you this right now, but please know if you're looking for more guidance on investing, tax strategy, withdrawal, estate planning, healthcare, investing, that is what this channel is all about. It's for you, designed if you're interested in retiring without the traditional retire 65, die 95, two kids, white picket fence. It's for those that want that more optimal, but anti-cookie cutter type of approach. Now let me show you this. Now this is a real portfolio. Now I changed the name to sample, just client name, but this is a real portfolio of someone who came to me in May, May 9th, and this was their portfolio. Now th there's two portfolios I'm going to show you today. The first one, this is just a 401k. Now at your 401k, you can't invest in whatever you want. There are limited options. So I don't want you to beat yourself up with what I'm gonna show you because some of you go, well, that fund looks familiar. Do I have a Fidelity fund? Do I have a BlackRock fund? Do I have a T. Rowe Price fund? Some of these are funds you just actually have to own, meaning you don't have to own these specific ones, but they give you 12 options and you have to pick one of them. What I like to do is to start by showing my clients, for example, if you have an old 401k, meaning with a previous company, Company. It doesn't have to stay where it is. You can actually move that into an IRA, invest however you want, and invest new dollars in your current 401k. So that's a common thing. I see a lot of people never roll over their previous retirement accounts. So that's one thing to be aware of. The second thing to be aware of, of why I'm showing you this, is if you have a current 401k, I need that talking to all of your other investments. Normally it's not. Normally you have investments over here and investments over here and investments over here, and they're not all talking to each other. So you don't really actually have a cohesive strategy. So very simply here, which I know is repetitive, um, you can see here, these are the funds. So for example, they have the T. Rowe Price Blue Chip Growth Fund. This is the ticker symbol. This is what percentage it represents of their portfolio, and here's the value. So they, you can see here, have a $1.4 million portfolio, and I'm just comparing to what if they owned it with Vanguard funds in this mix. And I'm not saying they should have this mix, just a, just a apples to apples comparison of what if they were able to move these funds, and in their case they would, they had this amount in an old 401k, and I said, what if you moved it to here? And the first thing they asked me, was what is the difference in fees? And I said, I want to educate you on all this stuff. And they go, hey, I'm sure you're excited to talk about US large cap and this and that. I, sh I want to know what am I paying? I go, what about this other stuff? They go, skip it. I said, okay. So I went down to the bottom here. I didn't talk about performance or any of these different cool graphs. And I just showed them what they were looking for. So what they wanted to know is what are those hidden fees? So what you can see here is their average net expense ratio. 
meaning the average fee of their actual funds is 0.71%. So let's look at it. I'm going to give it to you in plain English because it is overwhelming. Now, some of you are going to go, oh, I want to find this out. Well, you could go look at a prospectus, which is the most boring, long document of your life, or you can actually, and I encourage you to do so, just go to like a chat GPT or a Gemini, which is an AI, and do what I just said right here. What is the expense ratio of this ticker? It's going to tell you right away. What is the expense ratio? We're going to do it. So I'm going to do it with you so you don't have to be confused here. So the first thing here, when it says net expense ratio, what on earth does this even mean? Sales load. What on earth does this even mean? Let me break this down for you. So what this is saying is there is an expense to own this fund. Now, if we knew, everyone listening and watching right now, if we knew that we could guarantee a return better than 0.7%, I would put my hand up and say, guys, we have to own this fund. Yes, we're paying, let's call it 7000 a year. But if we knew we got 10000 a year to own it and we'd make money every year, what are we doing? Let's own it. The problem is there are some years it does outperform and there's years it underperforms. And in the years it underperforms, it still hits you with the fee. So here's my point here. You can see this expense ratio is 0.7%. So what does that mean? Let's assume you own this one fund, T. Rowe Price Blue Chip Growth Fund. And this is the fee associated. What this means is if you got a 10% return and your statement says 10%, which it never will because it doesn't just give you a statement that says what that is. But if you look at your year-to-date return on that specific product and it says 10%, they're lying to you. It's not 10%. It's 10 minus 0.7, which means it's 0.93. Now, that's not bad. Excuse me, 9.3. That does not mean it's bad. That's not, some people go, oh, you hate this fund. I don't hate this fund. But what I want to understand is, is it worth holding this fund? This person that came to me, they're spending $7,704 every single year to own this fund. So we want to ask ourselves, is it worth owning this fund? Does this fund outperform if we did not own this fund? Meaning what if we had a cheaper alternative? Would it be worth it? Which we're going to talk about in a second. Now let's go to the next one just so you can understand it. 0.75%. So if you got a 10% return, you did not. Once again, you did not. You got a 10% return minus the 0.75. You got a 9.25% return. That's what we need to ask ourselves. So they're currently only spending a thousand bucks a year on that because that fund only represents 10% of the portfolio. You can see this fund 1.09, that's pretty high. Normally, I don't like when these go above 0.4%. That's the highest I would like. Even this fund, I don't really love. So here's someone spending 10,000 bucks a year every year. They're never notified of it, and they'll never know it unless they are doing this type of analysis. And so they said, hey, what if we're with Vanguard and we moved over the money and you guys were managing and helping? I go, well, if we went with Vanguard, the overall fees would be about $800. They go, well, that's like $9,200 difference. Let's do this. I go, no, that's not the reason to hire an advisor. I would not let anyone work with me if that's what they said. This is another consideration. This is an important consideration. So right now, if you look at your mutual funds, you don't feel like you go, I don't even know how to find these things. What I want you to do is go into something like this, a chat GPT of some sort and say, I have the T. Rowe Price, what's it called again? Blue Chip Growth Fund. Blue Chip Growth Fund. What is the expense ratio? Don't go look at the prospectus. It's going to take you forever to find it. Here we go. So sometimes look at this. Isn't readily available on the fund summary page. So sometimes it's tricky. If you have a financial advisor, they can access it for you. Sometimes it's not great, which means I would have just given you this guidance and you would have been like, all right, what the heck? Why isn't it there? So sometimes let's do that. Let's look at the next one. I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to shift it right here. And I'm going to say I have the Clear Bridge Large Cap Growth Fund. Large Cap Growth Fund. What is the expense ratio? Let's see if it gets this one. Okay, so here we go. It has two expense ratios listed. The first one, it says 1.05. And then the next one, it says it can depend on the share class. There are two possibilities, 1.05 and 0.5. Now let's see what R says. R says 0.75. It says neither of these. So look at me telling you to go look at the AI. It's never going to be 100% accurate, but 
it, it should be, but he, what you're going to see here is this is based on this prospectus as of April 1st. What it did get correctly, and this is what I tested, is let's assume we were with VTI, Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. You can see I already did it up here. I said, what is the expense ratio of VTI? The expense ratio is 0 0.03. This is very cost, low cost. So the point here is this is where I want you to start. Th this is to get a sense of, okay, now let's see, let's do two more just for fun. Let's do this one, BlackRock Global Allocation Investor A. Let's do, what is the expense ratio of BlackRock Global Investor? Was it Global Investor? Global Allocation. Global Allocation Inv A, which stands for Investor. Let's see. Has three relevant, 1.13, 1.09, and 1.08. Let's see what we got there. 1.09, okay, so there you go. I gave you guys some guidance. I'm one for three. Isn't that like Hall of Flame in baseball or something? I'm not a baseball guy. But um, anyways, you can see here, that's, that's a fairly high fee. So we want to understand, are we getting value for it? So now you guys are wondering, well, how well is this portfolio done versus other portfolios? Meaning, yes, the fees are less, but with Vanguard, but is it worth it? Well, you can see if we look at the risk, the standard deviation, how risky is this portfolio? My portfolio of Vanguard, which I'm just recommending apples to apples comparison, you can see the risk is less in one years, three years, five years, 10 years. The bold means it's better, okay? So bold is better. It has a lower risk than the actual portfolio. In the actual portfolio, once again, $10,000 fees versus $800 fees. So it's not us always saying we're going to do that, but we want to make sure we're being strategic here. What about what's the most the money would have ever been down? Okay, what's the maximum drawdown? Well, in one year, their portfolio beat me, meaning their portfolio would have beaten. It was only down, you can see a maximum of about 9.4% versus mine 12%. But look at if we go out further. Three years, there was a point where they were down 40%. Mine was down 27%. There's down 40%. My example, 35%. So the point here is it doesn't tell the whole story, but it's a consideration. Now I'm going to show you guys one more example in a second, but what I just alluded to, some of the hidden fees, that there's three fees within an industry of advising. There's the fee of the investments you own, which is like a Vanguard or a Fidelity or an Empower. That's the fee that actually gets paid to the company you choose to invest in. I have that fee. My partner James has that fee. My parents have that fee. Bill Gates has that fee for whatever mutual fund or ETF they invest in. Then there's the fee that goes to the advisor. The fee that goes to the advisor, that's something you only want to pay for when you know you're getting significant value outweighing the fee, both quantifiable value and not so quantifiable value. And then lastly, the only other fee that exists are things like commissions or kickbacks. Those are things that we would never do, but a lot of advisors do. So what you can see here when it comes to kind of a traditional advisor in the middle versus a company like Root, as an example, a traditional advisor, they do the rebalancing. They're gonna help you select investments. They're gonna give you guidance on stuff that they're not managing, not all the time, but I should give the benefit of the doubt, but it doesn't always go deep enough. It's not doing the tax planning. It's not having specific exercises on how to think through purpose and fulfillment. They're not doing all of the insurance. They're not helping with the estate planning at no additional cost. They're not giving you withdrawal strategy examples. So what we're doing is a lot deeper, and I'm gonna give you an example so you can understand it for yourself. So here's another example of someone who came to me and they had a $4.4 million portfolio. You can see it was at the beginning of the year that they came to me, $4.4 million portfolio. You can see it right here. They had a lot of different investments and they came to me and I asked them, I said, what is the fee that you're currently paying to your advisor? And they said they're paying 1%. I said, okay, do you feel you're getting value for it? They go, yeah, you know, I feel like they're giving me good investment advice. My wife's really comfortable with them. It's a good relationship. I said, okay, great. Um, what is the fee you're paying? They said 1%. I go, okay, just to be clear, you're spending $44,000 a year to essentially be invested with them. They said, yes. I said, great, no problem with that at all. They said, so that's good, right? I go, that's not the fee. They go, 
Yeah, it is. You just 1%, 4.4 4 million is 44,000. I go, that's the advisory fee. What is the cost of all of these investments that you're inside of? They're like, I didn't know there's another fee. I go, there is, and it's a tricky one, but it's one of those fees that you need to know about. And they go, what are those? And I go, I'm going to show it to you. So once again, lots of different analysis and things I want to go through here with people when I'm doing planning for them. But in this example, I wanted to show them their hidden fees. And their hidden fees, when we added up all of the hidden fees, the examples I just went over, was about thirty. $5,658. That's what they're paying every year. So they said, are you telling me that I'm paying 44000 to an advisor and I'm spending another 35000 on these fees and am I paying close to $80,000 a year? I go, yes. And if you're getting value for it, then you should pay it. If you're paying 80000 a year and getting value of a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty thousand a year and feeling great and having total peace of mind, then it's a no brainer. Is that how you're feeling? And they go, No, I'm I'm kind of just getting investment guidance. I'm not getting kind of all the other things that you mentioned here. They're not coming to me and showing me kind of a, a tax sample. Uh, they're not showing me a return of where they go through my return and tell me about the brackets I should fill up and the conversions and the Medicare and the Irma surcharges and the deductions. I go, are they asking for your tax return? And they said, no. I go, well, they, they need to. That's how they do good planning. But if they're not, why are all the fees so high? And they go, I don't know. And I go, well, more often than not, there are agreements in place where they're often recommending a certain product, not because they want to, but because their fun, their firm actually incentivizes them to do so, meaning they're going to be paid more to have you select one product over another. And I go, that doesn't seem right. I go, that's what happened to my parents. That's one of my issues with the industry. The reason I am an independent company and I work at Root is because I don't want anyone to ever wonder, hey, are you recommending this product because it pays you something I don't see? And the answer is no, never. That is not the reason to hire an advisor. So someone said, hey, I just want comparatively, if I'm spending 80000 a year right now, what would it be like with you? I go, all in, you'd probably be closer to about half of that. They go, oh my God, so like 40000 less a year, like let's do this. And I said, no, don't hire us for that. I want you to make sure you're excited in terms of what we do because what we do is not for everyone. And I joke that my job is to scare people away. It's not actually. But what we do is not for everyone. It's we want clients to go, oh my gosh, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year how soon would you let me pay you because i see if we do that good roth conversion this year it's going to add a hundred thousand dollars and if we actually get this insurance policy it's going to protect us to this degree and if i get that trust and will in place well that's five thousand bucks i was going to spend anyway and if i look at my withdrawal strategy oh my gosh this is a no-brainer and i only let people move forward when they go this is a no-brainer so you can see we put together this sheet for people to really quantify and ask themselves, okay, is it worth paying an advisor? Now, more often than not, I will say if, and you can imagine people don't like when I say this, but I'll say it on my videos just like this. If you have a traditional advisor that is doing the rebalancing and giving you some basic investment guidance and maybe giving you a little bit of guidance on when you should collect social security, I'm not sure you should pay an advisor. Now, as you guys all can imagine, I will say that on a lot of these videos and other advisors are watching these videos, learning and educate, getting educated and they go, they'll shoot me an email. They'll go, hey, do you mind not saying that because you're kind of hurting my business? And I say, that's not my problem. I'm sorry. I have to add significant value or it does not make sense for anyone to work with us. So we do everything. So you can see when we're quantifying the value of our advice, we do all of the tax planning. We're doing all the investment guidance. There's significant value. We're doing all the estate planning. We're doing all the Medicare, the Social Security. We're doing all the insurance planning. We're optimizing the health care. We're doing everything. And this is our fee structure right here. It's very transparent. There's no commissions. There's no kickbacks. And the reason for this is because of what happened to my parents. I want to make sure everyone's getting incredible guidance at a cost that they are more than happy to pay where they get them over the moon with this level of planning, guidance, peace of mind. A lot of this can be quantified, but some of this can't. Eliminating catastrophes. One person came to me and they had a really significant Microsoft stock position. And I recommended they diversify and paid a little bit in taxes. They didn't like me at the time. And when Microsoft took a hit, it say that their annual fee working with us was essentially saved in a single day. Now, that's not the reason to work with us, but these are the types of considerations that 
I want you to at least consider if you have an advisor right now or if you're wondering about your current hidden fees, not everyone needs an advisor. I don't believe that. I believe it comes down to experience and timing. What experience are you looking for? Some people are like, I want to do this in retirement. Sit, pick me, pick me. I want to be an advisor. To those people, I go, if you're going to read the tax law and you love legislation and your spouse loves it, where if something happened to you, they're going to take it over, then maybe you don't need an advisor. If you're like, I want an advisor, I just want to make sure I'm getting value for it. Well, that's what all of this comes down to is are you getting value? And a lot of this is people are paying us so that they don't have to do it. Think about it like when you're getting financial advice, you want to make sure that it's something you're over the moon to pay for. And I really believe that. So when people say, oh, I don't know if I should work with you or any advisor and look at the fees and does this make sense? I go, it's not for everyone. It depends what experience you're looking for. And for some people, they go, you know, I just always want to be my own advisor. And that's what I'm looking for. So for those that go, I want to be my own advisor and I want to get more clarity on my finances, but I have this academy. In this academy, this academy is designed for those that go, I don't have $2 million yet to work with you guys, but I want to optimize. I want to pay a one-time fee for a few hundred bucks. And I want to start, and you can see what people say about it, but I, I want to start to get that next level of planning. And I want to play around and see what am I on track for? Can I retire confidently? What am I missing? And how do I add this amount of money in tax planning? And what if I do live longer? Or what if, you know, really get confidence? And you can hear from my clients who have done it. And I really want to make sure that you're feeling good. So this academy exists for that purpose where it's not one-on-one -on -one guidance. It's not with me. But you're going to see sample lessons of how I would approach the conversation and that is why I do this. So my goal is to help everyone regardless of where they are in their journey, if they have $100 or $100 million. So hopefully this was helpful in enlightening a lot of those hidden fees and I will see you guys next time.